What do you think of the snow? You've played in the Big Ten. Are you used to this? Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of in May. It's a little bit later than I would like like it to be. But, um, but yeah, in snow, I thought I could get away from it when I left Penn State. But uh, obviously, it ain't stopping no time soon here, at least it seems like. But, um, but yeah, snow is something I still got to get accustomed to, but I've been in it for a while. Um, it was actually a little bit below, like at least the standard that I had for myself. Um, obviously, I was a rookie last year, so I didn't know what to expect essentially. But I had big goals, big aspirations for myself. Um, and then, really, me not getting into the swing of, a, of a, my rookie season, kind of not until like later on in the season, like the last seven, eight games. So, kind of got a season cut in half, at least in terms of like usage and and in different areas. But I was still obviously uh, uplifted and, and obviously basically grateful enough that I'm having the opportunity. I'm able to go out on Sundays and do whatever it is that the team asked me to do, whatever my role was. But, um, but yeah, like the standards and the expectations I set for myself last year, obviously, um, at least in my standards, I didn't meet them. But then that's just obviously why I'm as excited for this season to get started so I could basically just pick up where I left off last year um, and just really just have a full season under my belt instead. What makes you think you're ready to live up to that standard? Um, I mean, I've been playing football all my life. Uh, this is something that like, I really invest a majority of my time in, um, whether I'm in the facility, whether I'm at home. Really, a lot of, one of the only things like, I think about is football and stuff like that and being successful at what I do. So um, it's really just uh, my motivation and, and uh, I guess my mindset that I've always had that you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes or I need to do whatever it takes so I can live up to my, the goals that I set for myself, the, the high standards that I always will have for myself and things like that. Yeah, um, Joe throws a great ball. He has a strong arm. Um, and then really just getting these practices under our belt, uh, getting all the reps together, um, building the chemistry, like you said, um, and then really just getting used to one another. He's getting used to all the receivers and everybody in the receiving core. But yeah, um, working with Joe so far, it's been great. Uh, like I said, I love catching his passes. He has a great arm. He has a great touch as well. Um, and then throughout basically mini camp and all these OTAs, he's looked great commanding the offense and delivering a good ball and putting us in the right position as an offense as a whole. Troy Fumagalli is a guy who also maybe had a rookie season that didn't live up to his expectations, being the injuries and all that. How do you think he handled that just from a personal level of getting to know the guy? I think Fum did a great job, honestly. Um, I, we, well, we lived in the same apartment complex last year, but, um, but I always obviously saw him every day. Um, and I knew Foom coming from the Big Ten, so like Foom, he obviously knew he was a baller. So like I just knew he just couldn't wait to get back out there and get his opportunity again. Um, and he just took it day by day. Obviously, it was just frustrating. It's always frustrating when you're not able to do what your job is to do. Obviously, what you've had fun doing your whole life and stuff like that. But um, I know Foom, he just attacked it every single day. Um, he wasn't really complaining. Didn't see him as much, obviously, on the field. But we always saw him working in the training room and in the weight room, things like that. And um, now that he's finally back healthy and things like that, he's shown really uh, great glimpses and all the stuff that I've already known for coming from the Big Ten and um, him being just uh, one of the greatest tight ends on our team. What are your initial impressions of the Skangarello offense? Um, obviously, it's, I think it's an offense that can, with the, like, the guys that we have, it could be like a well-oiled machine, to be honest. Um, you got so many guys that you can get the ball they get the ball in their hands on this offense. And with Coach Skang's offense, his, his philosophy, things like that, it's about getting guys open, getting premier guys open. Um, obviously, getting guys the ball in space, um, running between the tackles, setting up the play action. Um, and then when you set up the play action with a good run game, obviously, guys are going to be open way farther down the field, being able to take shots, things like that. So. Um, I'm excited about Coach Gang's offense and, and basically his philosophy and what he's installing right now. And um, a lot of the plays have been fun to run, been fun to go against the defense and see how they work out, things like that. So it's been good. They didn't sign a receiver in free agency, and uh, they didn't take a receiver in the top end of the draft. I mean, did you, and with the manual hurt, do you get the sense that they are counting on you and Cortland to make a big jump up? Um, I mean, even if they don't really kind of have that sense right now, I got that sense for myself. Um, uh, I obviously just I paid attention to the draft, for, I guess, as much as anybody else did. Um, and then really them not picking the receiver until, like you said, later wasn't really anything I was worried about. Um, I just knew coming off of last season, I just wanted to basically build off of that and be 10 times better for this season. And then whatever position that puts me in, obviously, if I perform during training camp, 
um, coaches to see that they can have a lot more, uh, that, well, they at least can put more reliability on guys like myself and Cortland and things like that going forward. But yeah, um, I really I took notice of it. But like I said, I just been working the same way as if I was a rookie and I'm trying to obviously continue to, to make my mark and make a splash on this team myself. What you're... about the jump a player can make from year one to year two is you're going through it and then it's a little weird because you got another new offense. But does the game slow down for you? Is it just comfort level? What's made because you just kind of stood out in the few practices we get to see you. What's different now for you? Um. Really, at least now I get to like from compared to last year, what my role was to now. I'm a lot, I'm running a lot more routes. I'm getting to use at least a lot of things I can do in route running within this offense, and and um, basically putting put me in positions where I got to beat the guy over me or find open spaces and things like that. Just stuff that I can use my football IQ with um, that I've, I had already had, but obviously it's just a different scheme, different structure of things. But um. I think really, yeah, just the difference difference from this year to from last year is just the confidence now. Last year, I guess it was just um, obviously I was thankful to be out there on the field. Now I was just more so worried about, OK, um, what am I doing? Make sure I'm doing the right things at all times. And then now it's just not really worrying about if you're doing the wrong things. It's about basically just making a play over the guy that's lined up over you and, and being able to play a lot faster in that regard. Last year worked for me, like at least as a rookie standpoint, but then now I just think I take my game to the next level. How do you describe your relationship with Emmanuel Sanders? He, yeah, he's obviously he's been somebody that I can, you know, just really just uh, just talk with back and forth. It can be a casual conversation, it can be on the field, stuff like that. But I sit next to him in the meeting room, so we're always basically just spitballing stuff off of one another. Um, he's coaching me up in, in a way that I ran around. He saw in practice and um, where he's telling me some things that he would have done in this situation or that he saw has worked or what would work for me, things like that. So uh, my relationship with Ease is fantastic, I'd say. Um, he's obviously been a great mentor since we came in, uh, him and DT. And then obviously him being the older the older guy in the room, the oldest guy in the room now, he knows that like he has a leadership standpoint aspect of it. But at the same time, um, basically him grooming us just going to make his leadership role a lot easier. And, and um, really, he's just made sure he's stayed on top of that. He's been on top of all the young guys coaching, being basically just another coach in the room for us. So what it's been good. Oh, uh, uh, Drew, he's smooth. Um, he's a smooth route runner. It, 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 like his strides, like he's smooth. He really has like a little quick twist to him. He's like a bigger guy with the smaller guys type of quickness at the same time. Um, but yeah, he's been able to go out. He's been making plays. Um, he's learning. He's pretty smart too. He's been learning the playbook pretty fast. Um, he's picking up on Coach Z's basic like uh, fundamentals and all the other stuff that he's been teaching us in every practice. So uh, I think he's coming along great. He's doing a great job. How, how do you think it helped your development that Angio kept his arm in here and you didn't have to change positions? Um, I think really just, yeah, again, it goes with me just being comfortable again going into year two, um, not having to get a whole new position coach. But we're already getting a new offense, new offense coordinator. A whole bunch of new missing, new different pieces on the offensive side of the ball. So I mean, with Coach Z being basically the one constant that we have on the offensive side of the ball for the most part, at least for the receivers, um, it just allows you to still just be comfortable and obviously you don't really got to go out and prove something different to another coach or show your worth of like that. Coach Z knows what he's working with. He knows the guys that he has in his room, um, he, and he believes in all his guys. And then obviously we work hard for him just because of the fact that he does believe in all of us. So. Yeah, like I said, it just allows us to still be comfortable. It allows us just to go out and just have, not really have a whole new slate of things, but Coach Z still being there, teach us fundamentals, and, and allowing us to play fast, things like that. Uh, Deshaun, early in the season, <coughs> Cortland Stubborn, where you were, and talked about he's ready to be the number one receiver in that mindset. Do you have a similar mindset, or what's your mindset if he's up here thinking he's the number one? Or, or, or yeah, like, I mean, yeah. I don't, like all that wide receiver one, two, three, if E comes back, all the other stuff. I think of it as I want the ball as many times as I can possibly get it, and I'm going to make as many plays as I possibly can. Um, so, yeah, I'm coming in. I have the same mentality as Cortland, ready to step up. Obviously, he's coming back from his rehab and, and his whole Achilles situation, things like that. But, like I said, next man up, I have the same mentality as Cortland. I'm ready to be the wide receiver one myself. I'm ready to basically just make as many plays as, as I'm called on to make um, and really just be on top of my responsibility, be somebody, like I said, that could be like a splash player for us all season. And that's really just like just some of the standards I have for myself. What did you do most of your off-season training? And were there specific things that you were really focused on? Oh, yeah, I was down in Florida um, 
from like the day after or two days after the last game until like probably about three days before we started uh, mini camp and OTAs and all the other stuff. I was down in Florida training, um, getting my weight back on because uh, I was you know losing a lot of weight just over the course of the season. I hadn't played in 16 games before like that, but um, but yeah, getting my weight back on, getting basically back to 100% healthy. I was playing, finished the season a little bit banged up last year, but then on top of that, just. Focusing on being a lot quicker, a lot more powerful, a lot stronger in a lot of things that I'm doing. Um, and then especially me working in the slot and outside, so I can basically just work on versatility in all of my routes. Um, I always made sure I was still working on catching the ball. Um, but yeah, really just getting a lot of the little things back, like explosiveness, my strength all back to really just as if I was coming in from, uh, from combine training and stuff like that. So um, when I got back up here, I felt great, felt like I was in a good spot and ready to go. How much did you feel the knee? <coughs> Um, in the last, probably all the games that I started or the finally was getting starts in, um, I, the knee was still bothering me. I probably was like playing at 70, 80% those last, those last couple of games. But then it wasn't too much longer after the Chargers game. My knee started to feel a lot better. Um, and then now coming out here, it feels great. But, um, but yeah, the, the last four, four or five games, I say I probably felt it the most. And that goes into another thing. My season kind of getting, my rookie year kind of being different, kind of getting cutting short and not really a full season or full games under my belt, things like that. But yeah, the, the, probably those last four or five to six games, I'd say. Have you been uh, surprised at all at the speed of Emmanuel's recovery? Um, no, I mean, one, I didn't really know how Achilles worked. I know that it was obviously a major and severe injury, things like that. But, um, but I mean, I. Oh, that's just really just the, com the competitive nature that he has. Um, and then I know he sees us out here practicing things like that. He wants to hurry up and get back and, and be along with the wide receiver core as well, making his own plays. So he obviously just he's just itching to get back, itching to make plays with us. But, um, but yeah, he's been doing a great job, like I said, too. Uh, he's been in the weight room grinding it out all off season. Um, he's in here early mornings, late afternoons, making sure he's obviously just going to be ready to go for training camp or preseason whenever he may is or is slated to come back. But yeah, I'm not surprised by it. But obviously, I, I see like you know obviously why he's working so hard to get back to it because he he left a lot on the plate last year too. So um, I know he's ready to come back better than ever. Your early impressions of this offense. How much do you expect to be used as a blocker, and how much have you grown in that aspect of your game? Um, I think really just all receivers going to be at least in this offense. All receivers are going to be used as blockers, um, just because the fact that you know we're not always split out wide as much. Um, we're in a little bit more condensed splits. It's condensed splits in this offense, so we're going to be involved in the run game a lot more. Um, me being in the slot and playing outside, things like that, I'll probably be matched on linebackers, the end, stuff like that for the play purposes. But, um, but I mean, I see myself really just, I guess, just doing whatever the team calls for, whatever my responsibility is. Um, running the ball wise, how much, that I'm not sure of. Um, but yeah, the, I see really just, that's just another thing Coach Z uh, has always harped on is, is being great blockers as well as, as pass catchers and route runners. So. Um, I put the same type of, I guess, focus and effort in, in, in run blocking as I do is running routes and any of the other drill work they were possibly doing because I know it all messes together and all is important.